I know some of you want children or already have children and I also received a request to talk about parental leave in Sweden. So here we are, this is today's topic of my video. I want to go through the details of parental leave in Sweden so you know a little bit better how it works. And of course, I want to also share my opinion and my experience so far. So hopefully at the end of this video, you know a little bit more about it. And of course, as always, if you have any insights yourself, leave a comment down below. So about nine months ago, we moved to Sweden just outside of Stockholm. And when I say we, I mean my British partner and my three-year-old daughter. And I also talk about parental leave in this video because I'm currently pregnant. I don't know if I've already given birth when I'm airing this video because I'm trying to pre-record a few videos just because I know it's going to be a little bit crazy when the little one is born. But yeah, I have less than two weeks until my due date. So I will let you know in the description below if I already gave birth. <laughs> But yeah, because I'm expecting a baby, I obviously looked more into the whole parental leave topic. And that's why I also want to share now with you what's going on here in Sweden. So I have a little bit of uh, details on my laptop as well to give you, you know, days and maybe numbers. So if I look sometimes this way, it's because there's my laptop. But yeah, in general, I just wanted to give you a few facts about parental leave here in Sweden. For example, the parental benefit is paid for 480 days per child. So I find that actually quite a lot of days. And for 390 days, the compensation is based on your income. And then 90 days, it's basically the minimum pay which I believe is 180 krona per day. So that's kind of like the lowest level you can get. And they kind of call this leave sickness benefits. So you technically take out days of your sickness benefits. So you are kind of like ill and unable to work. And then another rule is basically that the first 180 days taken out for the child must be days at the sickness benefit level. And then once you have taken out those 180 days, you can start taking out days at the minimum level. So it's just a little rule they put into the whole system. And then when it comes to kind of sharing your parental leave, you basically get 195 days each at the sickness benefit level and 45 days each at the minimum level, just in case you kind of equally share it with your partner. So you can really do it however you want, but just 90 days are actually allocated 100% to each parent. For example, if you decide as a mom to take all the leave, then 90 days actually has to go to your partner. So you can't take those 90 days which basically kind of forces the dad to also take some time off and look after the children. It doesn't have to be, you know, 90 days in a row. It can be a week, it can be a month, it can be once a week, you know, you could do every Friday for then 90 days. So it's really up to you how you decide. But I think it's kind of cool that the dad is a little bit forced to do that. I wouldn't even say it's forced. It's actually a huge opportunity every employer kind of knows about it it's the law and you have to really give it to them and as far as i know i think every human being every man or partner would be quite lucky to also take some time off and to spend time with your children so yeah i'm showing you a little graph actually to kind of summarize what i just said where you basically have the days and then you have parent one and two. And you can see first it says days on sickness benefit level that can be transferred is 105 days per parent and days at sickness benefit level that cannot be transferred are those 90 days. So each parent has at least those 90 days they have to take. And then days at the lowest level, those 180 krona per day that can be also transferred so again one parent can take all of these days in general it would be 45 per parent 
and then you can see here in total it does 240 days. Another rule if you're interested in it is basically that you can take out 30 days combined sickness level benefits. So that means you can both stay at home together with the children. I guess sometimes at the beginning it is quite nice when you have a newborn to be both at home, especially also if you have another kid like we have. So you can look after both kids. So yeah, you can just do that. But in general, the rules are made that only one parent stays at home and the other parent normally works. But 30 days you can do combined. And then the last kind of like generic rule you might want to know is that you can actually withdraw parental benefit up to and including the day the child turns 12 years old. But there's a little restriction when the kid actually turns four you can only save 96 days in total after that. So for example, our daughter is three at the moment, but when she turns four, a lot of her days will just expire and she has 96 days left. We can take them up until she's 12. And then what might be actually quite interesting as well is actually how much do you get? Like what are the rules about how much do you get from the government each month or how can you allocate what you get and when so if you for example work in sweden so you have a job you know here in sweden which is probably the most ideal situation you can have then the rule is actually that you get 80 percent of your income if you take out parental benefit seven days a week but there is a maximum and that is 1027 krona per day so even if you earn more you know, that's the maximum. So there is a, a little cap on how much you can get. But there's also a rule, you have to actually have worked 240 days before you go on parental leave, or at least before the expected delivery. So yeah, I mentioned that already, but uh, parental benefit based on your income is called parental benefit at the sickness benefit level. And to receive the benefit at the sickness benefit level, you must have an annual income of at least 82,300 for at least 240 consecutive days before the estimated delivery. So these are just numbers I'm throwing around, which are all got from their website, First Actions Kassan. So I didn't make them up. So I looked them up on the website, which actually gives you all the information about sickness benefits, but also parental leave. And it's not necessary that you had to work at the same place, for example, or that you have to have the same income. You know, it will actually calculate it from at least 240 days, maybe you even have more days and then the average will be calculated. Let's say you have not worked here in Sweden for 240 days, then you still would get parental leave benefits, but it is not as much. And there is basically everyone gets kind of the same amount in case you haven't worked 240 days here in Sweden and that is 250 krona per day and that is also for the first 180 days that are taken out for the child and that's about 7500 krona per month and then after those 180 days it can be recalculated maybe because you reach your 240 days of parental leave for example if you are employed but let's say you only work there 200 days then after those 180 days on parental leave already at minimum level you get recalculated because technically you are still working at your company and those days are actually added to the amount of how many days you worked in sweden if that makes sense so i also want to talk about if you are an entrepreneur because that's basically what i did i registered a company here so I'm self-employed and how does it work when you are actually self-employed here in Sweden? So it is kind of similar because you are employed at your own company when you have, for example, a limited company, the AB Axibulag here in Sweden, then you are an employee at your own company. So it works then very similar. You normally pay yourself a monthly salary and that number will be basically taken by first sacraments kasan to calculate your benefits and here it is that you get a maximum of 1012 krona per day and if you maybe don't take a salary or the salary is lower than a 117 500 
90 krona per year then you also get the minimum benefit and that is 200 krona per day at the sickness benefit level so if you have followed me you also know that okay first of all we only live here nine months and there was a process where i had to actually register my new business and then start you know paying tax with my new business and i can already tell you that i didn't work those 240 days basically on paper here in sweden so i wouldn't fall under that category but one thing i'm very very fascinated about sweden that rule i obviously did not know about it at all when i came here but i thought this rule is very very great at least in my situation is that you're actually treated as someone who's already earning a specific amount of money so i'm an insights analyst i registered my business to be an insights analyst self-employed and you can compare that with employees at a company how much they normally get and you basically say okay that's x amount of money i normally earn per month as an employee that's basically how much i would pay myself every month as an employee but at my own company and they take that and for the next 36 months they assume that's the amount you're going to earn as your business it has a word and basically <laughs> I'm trying to actually say that now in Swedish. It's such a difficult word. It means kind of construction phase, but in Swedish it's ubbygnarsrede. Sorry about that. This is something so hard in Swedish, you know. I am German and I can speak English, but this is something very Swedish and I really struggle with the rede, something they do. But yeah, if you ever think like you have maybe a business somewhere else and you move here or you want to start a business and you have really details about how much you can earn with it this is the way to go obviously there's no guarantee that they say we will put you on this construction phase but it's definitely worth it if you haven't worked those 240 days as an employee here in sweden to go that route i actually got the tip from someone else in a facebook group looked it up and then talked to first sacrans kasan about it and at the end of the day they decided to actually go that route so that means i'm getting paid like an employee here in sweden based on my salary as an insights analyst and that's basically where i am at the moment i wanted to talk about a few challenges you might face for example i am a eu citizen and there are benefits to be an eu citizen especially if you have worked in europe you know in another european country or in a eu country then normally I was told they usually accept that as you have worked 240 days let's say i worked in germany before and then i moved to sweden they will look into it and say like yes she worked 240 days in germany that actually counts and we can give her parental leave benefits then my salary in germany will be taken into account i mean in general i definitely recommend you to call first sacrans san and to ask about your specific case just because it can be very helpful to know what's going on with yourself. I have called them many times and they have always been really great with answering my questions. So even if you get the information here in this video, feel free to call them. So for me, for, for example, unfortunately, one route I thought I could maybe go is because I have worked before, I could take that as the 240 days and then basically just can kind of continue. But I used to work in the UK, which is not a EU anymore. So that means this, uh, you know, rule doesn't apply anymore. And that's definitely a big uh, problem. Also, the whole Brexit thing was so new that most of the time no one really knows how to treat UK citizens, you know, when they come here or people who worked in the UK, you most of the time do get rejected, you know, for things like that. I remember a caseworker did look into that area because I told her, you know, I did work in the UK, I'm a EU citizen, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't really work out because they have their kind of rules or new rules about Brexit UK at the moment. So that wasn't really an option for me. But on the very positive side, I think it's great that you at least get those minimum parental leave benefits. And that really applies to everyone who moves here. And then, you know, after parental leave, you can obviously 
look for a job or um, continue your job you maybe just started and last but not least i wanted to go actually even into more detail about some things i found out on the way when i you know wanted to know how parental leave really works and how i can apply and for how long um it is really up to you there's a lot of um freedom in choosing um how many days for example you want to take out parental leave so for example you could just say you want to be paid one day or two days or seven days a week for parental leave that also means you can really spread maybe you don't need enough money maybe your partner earns quite a lot so you know you could really spread it over a few years you don't have to take everything in like the first year or, or second year so you can really plan ahead i have heard of people sometimes who maybe want to go on a longer holiday and then they decide you know in a year's time before maybe the kid starts um nursery they want to take out a few days or like seven days a week to to go on holiday you know it's possible um the system provides you with that option and some people do that so yeah i thought that was quite interesting because in the uk i remember you know i just had i think 10 months or so where i was on parental leave and i couldn't choose like you know i just wanted to be two days on parental leave or only five days it was just um 10 months from the start of the birth or maybe one or two months uh parental leave before the birth and then when the time was up that was it there was nothing left after 10 months i couldn't you know calculate or i couldn't plan myself when to take it so that was definitely a big difference to here now in sweden oh and another thing i mean this goes into so much detail now but you know you can look it up yourself but i, I think it's just very interesting to know you can actually even take out half days. I wrote it down a little bit, like you can have the full pay, so 100%, three quarters, which is 75%, half, 50%, one quarter, 25%, or even one eighth compensation, 12.5%. That's absolutely mental. But you cannot choose to withdraw parental benefit to any other extent than just these so these are actually the options but i think it's a lot of options and this means that you can for example work 50 percent and take up parental benefit of 50 percent. that makes sense however you cannot work 80 percent and withdraw parental benefit by 20 percent just to read you this so you understand as well maybe you have a special agreement with your work or you are actually self-employed then maybe it makes more sense to really spread it a little bit more where you say, no, I'm actually only working half day and the other half day I will look after my child. So that's apparently an option here in Sweden. So I hope this was a little useful for you. I mean, I have definitely not found any information, you know, on YouTube or somewhere, even on blog posts, which are going so much into detail. So it is definitely something interesting to know. And then again, as I said already, First Sacrament Kassan is the number one source to call and to ask any further question. If you do have any questions, I'm obviously more than happy to try to answer them down in the comments below. But if I can't, I will probably just tell you to call First Sacrament Kassan. Oh yeah, and I also received the question how we as a family actually handling parental leave. And it's an interesting question, which we haven't really figured out yet, because it's also a very new concept for us, you know, in the UK, there were not any options really. My partner was allowed to take off two weeks or he got paid for two weeks and then he actually took another week off as holiday to be with me um, three weeks in total at the very beginning and the rest of you know my parental leave for example he was just working full time when i was actually um at home with the baby so now as i mentioned before he kind of has to take those 90 days at some point and he's excited about it but also overwhelmed because it's very busy at work so we will see how we are doing it at the moment we tend more to maybe do like one day a week for him for a while but uh, i'm also quite keen at some point you know 
for him to spend like almost every day with the baby for you know at least a week or two or maybe a month we will see so that question i can't answer yet because we haven't really decided yet how to do it he definitely will be with me the first two weeks maybe even the first month just because also it is new for us now to have a toddler and a baby at the same time so that comes with also new challenges but i will definitely keep you updated how our parental leave will look like at some point this is not the last time i will probably talk about it well thank you so much for watching till the end and i hope i will see you in my next video until then have a great day and stay safe. Hey, though.